And she looked over and she goes, if you love me, you'll go. I went, I'll go do psychedelics with my friends in Mexico. Sure. I, don't. I never thought it would do anything because I had messed up so much until that point. All the pharmaceuticals, all the mistakes I had made, the infidelity, everything had led me up to that point, And I had that secret inside me and I did not have the strength to tell her. I didn't want to break her heart about all the things I had messed up. And for me, if you think me going down to Mexico is going to save our marriage, I will 100% do it. But I never thought for a chance it would. Never. And I went down there with a bunch of guys that were legends inside of the community. And, you know, Ambio, Trevor, Jose, Jonathan, Brianna, everybody at Ambio Life Sciences, they run the best facility I've ever been a part of in any facility. That medicine is so strong, and I think that's why guys get such relief. It's the only thing stronger than your ego. Because you've turned yourself into this vessel you think represents the essence of what being a Navy SEAL is. You're hard, you're determined, you'll never lose. Like you, You'll sacrifice everything right now if the group asks you to do it, but you won't do it for yourself. You'll never put your individual needs above the needs of the group, and this is one point where you have to. You have to go for the good of the group, I have to suck up my ego, got to suck up my pride, and I have to try to kill it right now. And we went down there and took that medicine. And I have a combatives instructor. His name's Tom Kyer from Seahawk Tactical Group. If you've ever watched uh, the movie The Hunted with Benicio Del Toro, the knife fighting, that's what they do, and they are the best in the world. And Tom Kyer is a knowledge transfer specialist. He's changed my life in mindset more than anybody else on the planet. And he told me a quote the other day that, it references this kind of, and we were talking about experience, and he goes, if you understand, no explanation is needed. If you don't understand, no explanation is possible. And that came from Dave Joyce, another Seahawk disciple, and it's the truest thing I've ever heard. Unless you've done Ibogaine, unless you've done psychedelics in a therapeutic setting, you'll have no idea how powerful it is. And when I woke up that next day, everything I had ever done, negative, positive, erased, Everything negative, every conversation, every bad deed, every time I've hurt anybody, every time I've made my wife cry, every time I've not been present was on the forefront of my mind. And I felt absolutely terrible. I felt like a monster for everything I had done, every time I had not been present, every time I had sacrificed them for this thing. I didn't want to go home. And at the same token, it was the only time in my life I'd ever been homesick. I wanted to teleport and go home and wrap my arms around those three but I was so embarrassed at everything that I had done. There's no way I can do it. I can't go home and break their heart. And you have the gray day after you do Ibogaine. I mean, it feels like you got hit by a, a freight train just in your feels, dudes are throwing up all day, depending on how your experience is. The next day you do 5-MeO-DMT, and that's the ego death. You know, it comes with Sonoran Desert Toad, they milk out the poison glands, and that's essentially what you're smoking. It's pretty intimidating. Looks like you're smoking crack rock. And that experience, when you smoke that, it must be like either what finding religion or what dying's like. Well, you almost died with the electrocution. Yeah. And we had a, a very accomplished neuroscientist on the podcast, uh, Christoph Koch, who talked about um, – He's been studying consciousness for a long time, and he talked about his experiences on 5-MeO-DMT, uh, total dissolution of self, total dissolution of space and time. But he described um, that he that the, his mind was still there, but nothing else was there. And again, if someone hasn't done it, I've never done it, but if someone hasn't done it, I'm guessing that no description will, will suffice. I've heard it like from another team guy being described as being strapped to the shockwave of an atom bomb. I'm like, uh, mm. you know, I've, I've, I've heard a bunch of different descriptions. It sounds, when you come out of that experience, however, how did that reframe the electrocution, the loss of, I mean, we could spend three days talking about every single guy that you know that's been killed and still probably only uh, touch on a, a n small number of them, sadly, you know? So how does all that get reframed coming out of an experience like that? The biggest concern doing Ibogaine was that you were gonna be stuck inside of your own thoughts. Everybody you had lost, you were just gonna relive it. You were gonna be in the back of that helicopter. You were just gonna have to relive that for 24 straight hours. And I will tell you that not a single person that I've ever done Ibogaine with has ever had any military experience. 
it's always been your childhood, and then a reflection of what you've done to your wife and kids. It gaps it. So I've done Ibogaine four times. I have never had a singular military experience ever. Nothing. Childhood? Childhood. Big time. Childhood. And then in, in the actual medicine, it would allow me to relive past events with my father, with my mother, hard conversations, you know, blow ups, arguments, screaming, Things you smashing, had forgotten. Things I'd forgotten. Things that were never on my conscious mind. Mm -hmm. And now I'm reliving them. And then it would shift and it would be me doing that exact same thing to my wife, to my kids. And then it'll put you in their position. So when I'm screaming, I'm projecting just this hate and this venom is shooting out of me, I can be that seven-year-old little girl. And I can feel how frightened she is by what she's watching her father turn into. So real empathy. That is what it is. You become so empathetic to everyone and everything. And it's the forefront of your mind. Like, I don't want to go home because now I know what I've done. I can't mask it anymore. There's no more compartmentalization. I've done, I've done all those things. I've said that terrible stuff. And I'm never going to be able to re-earn my seat at the table. And it's one of those weird predicaments where I want to go home, but I don't because I don't want to face that I actually did and said that. It's like out of every good thing I've ever done, it all got erased on that moment. The only thing we're going to focus on is all the bad stuff you've ever done and said. So when we came into 5-MEO, I did six rounds of 5-MEO my first time down there. Every single one is the most painful thing you've ever been a part of. It feels, um, and Trevor says it beautifully down at AMBO, he said, whatever's going to happen, let it happen. If you think you're going to explode, explode. If you think you're going to die, die. If you think you're going to drown or blast off in the stratosphere, do it. Don't try to control it. That medicine will take you exactly where you need to go. You just have to let it. And every time I would, I would start, I would scream, and then I would cry and convulse, throw up. And I'd wake up and I'd look around and he'd look at me again. Hit him again. And I'd do it again. And I'd do it again. And it was the very last time I did 5-MEO. You got to understand, I was super depressed and I was most certainly suicidal. I did not want to come home and face reality. And I took that last one. And right before I did... I can't remember if it was the, the nurse or, because we used to have teen guys that would sit there and hold space for you, not taking the medicine, just they were there to basically safeguard the house so you could just focus on you. Because it's hard to be put under essentially anesthesia in a foreign country and you don't know what's going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. So there's comfort in knowing there's teen guys around you. And he was either the nurse or one of the teen guys goes, you want to kill yourself, right? I said, yeah. And he goes, then do it. Do it with this right here. And I changed my intention for the medicine. And I told myself it was this pink toxin, this purple toxin. I'm going to inhale it. I'm going to coat my entire body with this. And I'm going to kill myself right here so I don't have to go home. And that changed the entire experience for me. Everything shrunk down jet black and a single white pixel showed up and it exploded. And it looked like it was Star Trek taking off. All the tracers and everything. It felt like your sternum broke open and your soul left your body. And it was the true ego death. And it went from screaming, thrashing to complete bliss and love and affection and empathy and compassion and everything. And I woke up and I looked at him and I could not believe the way I instantly, I mean, the most sober you've ever been. You're not on any medication, not cannabis, not, not an Adderall, nothing. You can't be on any medication when you go down there. So this is true sobriety at its finest. And when you wake up, it's exactly like the electrocution. Everything is more vibrant. The table edges are slick and clean. Like I can feel the taste and the texture and I can feel the energy coming out of everybody. And it's like, I can tell her. I can go home and I can confess everything right now because I understand that I have done more good than bad. And she's going to see it. She just has to see the new me. And we went home and, you know, everything kind of unfolded and all my past indiscretions came to life. And it was... It was the darkest moment for me because I didn't think she was going to take me back. And she ends up pulling my sunglasses off. She pulls them off and looks at me and essentially collapsed in my arms like I was back. I'd been gone for 15 years and now I'm home. And the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. And if I wouldn't have gone down to Mexico, there was no talk therapy. There was no meditation. There was no cold plunge. It was going to get me there. It was something stronger than me. And when you look back, I'd been building that physical vessel this mental resilient vessel this entire time so nothing could break me. And I needed something stronger than that to break me. And the moment it did, my whole life changed. Everything changed. And 
I really became an advocate for the medicine because I'd been there. I'd been sitting in my guest room with that pistol in my lap, staring around the ceiling, wondering where my brain matter is going to go and what my wife's going to see and how she's going to have to clean it up and resell the house and just all the things. I mean, that's where you're at. And that's where a lot of guys are. And they don't believe they can get a breath of fresh air. And that medicine will give it to you. It is not a cure-all. I mean, you have to go back and restructure your entire life and cut out the toxicity. And that was one of the most powerful things we did is I came back from that medicine. I sit down on the edge of that bed with my wife after we had gone through everything I had done. And I went through my phone and we blocked and deleted about 150 people out of my life. Best thing I ever did. Like, you're never coming back in here. I've been trying to foster and save that relationship for the better part of a decade. I'm not doing it anymore. You're robbing bandwidth and you're robbing the little time I have left on this planet that I'm going to try to devote to my family because I have to re-earn this seat at the table every single day. And it gave me the ability to do that. And I came home, started preaching about the medicine. And then as I started to tell guys, you'd see guys that were interested and they were like, well, if it worked for him, because I'm a true believer, I'm devout. And they're like, if it worked for him, it'll work for me, but they're scared to go. So I was probably home maybe a month or two. I went right back down and I essentially hosted one. I'm cooking breakfast for the boys. I'm cleaning snot off of them. I'm doing the whole thing, just trying to push them. And slowly but surely, you start saving guys, 10 guys at a time, over and over. And, you know, that's really all because of Marcus and Amber. If they would not have made that little infomercial airing out all their dirty laundry and how open and transparent he was like that is not the navy seal way that is not how you're supposed to do it and when he did it it was so empowering to me i mean i looked up to him i mean he was on his second deployment when i came in and you know marcus is larger than life to me so when you see that openness that transparency i can do that i can do that too and if i do that some kid going through the exact same thing as me that's stuck on that island alone will see me and go if he can do it i can do it you got to want to change and you have to put steps in, in place to where you can live at a full value. The morning routine. I don't break it because I know what happens if I don't have it. The worst I've ever been. I wasn't living that morning routine. I was still working out, but it was chaotic at best, right? Like my range wasn't there. My combatives wasn't there. I slowly let it drift away to where I was a shell of myself. And once I got that breath of fresh air, I am never going back. I mean, I just came back on Saturday. I went back down again, took down a bunch of veterans, a bunch of civilians that were down there. And it's so interesting to see because you have fighter pilots that are down there. You have normal housewives that have drinking problems, toxic marriage, sexual abuse, all this different stuff. And everybody's ended up the exact same spot. We've tried everything. We tried the drugs. We tried the talk therapy, the cold plunges, the saunas, all that. And it's helping, but it's not getting us over the goal line. And when those people wake up the very next day, they are at total rock bottom. And when they come out of that 5-MeO DMT, they, their feet don't hit the ground for months. You are on cloud nine and you cannot believe how good you feel. I just want the world to be able to experience that. It doesn't matter what trauma you have going on. It's not a Navy SEAL medicine or a medicine for special operations. This is a medicine to save humanity. And if you are at the bottom of the barrel right now, they'll save you. I mean, I went on 60 pills a day. I'm not on anything, not a single pain med. I mean, I've got more screws in me than Home Depot and I feel like a million bucks, but you know, for me, my family deserved it. And if I have to go down there and go through all that trauma over a five day period to give them a better version of myself, I'll do it every single time. That juice is so worth the squeeze.